We will now view a demo that shows the advantages provided by Genexus to develop rich content applications in a user-friendly environment oriented to the developer's needs. Let's suppose that we're asked to develop a software system using web technology to automate the tasks of a company dedicated to selling products. In short, a billing system is needed. So what we need to do is describe the company's reality using Genexus objects. Building on this knowledge, Genexus will automatically create the database and generate the application programs for us. To do so, we start the Genexus development environment. Here is Genexus's integrated development environment. It's a cutting-edge IDE with a look and feel that is familiar to developers and which has an extensible architecture that allows them to add components and capabilities to the Genexus copy that was originally installed. In addition, an interesting feature to note is that from within the same development environment, the analyst is connected with the Genexus community and can read news, updates, solutions published by other fellow developers, and so on. To start working with Genexus, the first thing we have to do is create a knowledge base. To do so, we click on New Knowledge Base, and in this dialog box, we enter the knowledge base name, the folder in which we will store this knowledge base, the language that we will use to generate the application, and we will leave interface as web and the language as English, and press the Create button. At this time, all the objects and structures necessary for the knowledge base to be ready to work are created. Genexus configures these objects and starts them with default values that we will be able to change and customize later, modifying our application's behavior and appearance. So, here is our knowledge base. Note that the knowledge base navigator has several objects created by Genexus. Also note that we have several references to the knowledge base, or KB, on which we are working. For example, here in the knowledge base navigator, we have the name and date of creation, and also in the status bar which displays the complete path where the KB was created. We have been asked to create an invoicing system, that is to say, we will have to enter invoices. The Genexus object, used to interactively enter and edit data in the database, is called the transaction object. Therefore, we will have to create an invoice transaction. Let's click on the new object link. In the dialog box to create a new object, we select an object of transaction type. We name it, in this case, invoice, and now we will enter the attributes that make up an invoice. For example, an invoice has a number that identifies it uniquely. Let's say an invoice ID of numeric type. But in this case, I will create an ID data type of numeric type simply because I anticipate that we will have several identifiers of ID type, and we will want this number to be auto-numbered. An invoice also has an invoice date. Let's note that in this case, Genexus automatically assigned the date data type based on the name that I gave the attribute. An invoice also has a customer. Here again, Genexus assigned the ID data type, which is a domain, a new data type, to the customer ID attribute due to an association in its name. This is knowledge that was stored in the knowledge base, and now Genexus is using it. Let's create the customer name. Here, I will create a name and a data type, which is a character of 30. So far, we have created the fixed part of the invoice, that is to say, the invoice header. Now, we will enter the details line, which contains the products to be invoiced. We add a subordinate level, and we give a line identifier to each line.
a line also has a product. The product has a description and a price. And here I will create a new data type, a numeric of 10.2. These new data types, called domains, give us an advantage because if we later change this domain, all the attributes based on it will be updated automatically. So a line also has the amount that will be invoiced, and the line amount. Notice that since the attribute ended in amount, Genexus automatically found that it could be the data type of the domain we had defined. To finish, we add the invoice total. We save it. As a matter of fact, the line amount could be calculated by multiplying the product price by the quantity of products invoiced. So, the line amount will be calculated as a formula. And we define the formula as the product price multiplied by the quantity of products invoiced. Also, the sum of all lines is the invoice total. Therefore, we will calculate the invoice amount attribute as the sum of the invoice lines. We save. From the structure of this transaction object, Genexus will obtain the information to automatically create in the database the tables needed to store the invoice data. For example, we'll see that in this transaction, two tables will be created an invoice table corresponding to the invoice header and an invoice detail table corresponding to the detail lines of the invoice. It is worth pointing out that from the information entered in the transaction and given that our application is web-based, Genexus will automatically generate the web form with all the necessary controls to insert, edit, and delete invoices. Next, Genexus will build the invoicing web application with no need to write a single line of code.